If you're going on camera, don't wear headphones when your hair's drying. Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to take you through what we believe to be the most exciting games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of May. As always, this is not going to be an exhaustive list. We can't tell you every game because we don't know every game, and no doubt some games will be announced in May. It happens. This is merely what we're excited for. You know, the, the stuff that we look at and we go, want that. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Starting things off on the 2nd of May, we have Endless Ocean Luminous, the third game in the Endless Ocean series. <laughs> I don't know why it started like that. Now, it's fair to say that this game isn't going to be for absolutely everyone. It's very much a sort of like a relaxed, take it at your own pace kind of game with... I mean, there is an objective, there's a story mode and everything, but even then, it it's it's not Doom Eternal. I am reasonably excited for this game, I just wish it had come a little bit earlier, uh, as I recently had a bit of a stressful period in my life, lots going on, could have done with a bit of escapism, diving underwater, um, but I suppose better late than never, th that is entirely a me problem. <laughs> But what is nice is that 30 people can play online together. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out, but we'll have to wait and see. It's an interesting notion at the very least. Then on the 8th of May, we have Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs, which... They're running out of titles for Pac-Man, I swear. This was originally released for Stadia under the name Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle. If you can flip and believe it, and yeah, it was it was an exclusive for a while, and now it isn't because Stadia doesn't exist. Nothing's exclusive to Stadia because it doesn't exist. And if you haven't been able to tell from the footage already, it is a battle royale Pac-Man game. To be honest. I, I could be wrong, it may be that I've just played this in the past, not on Stadia though, so I don't know how, but a Battle Royale Pac-Man game isn't a terrible idea, you've got all the different boards you can go between and stuff like that, and the boards get eliminated, you know, oh, you know, the area that you can move in gets smaller, it's it's literally Battle Royale, a uh, good film by the way. No doubt gonna be interesting, will probably fade into obscurity faster than the developers would like, but at least when it first appears, it's probably gonna be a good time, so I'm looking forward to that. Also on the 8th of May, we have Gift. Now, this is a difficult game to search for because it's just called Gift. But even then, the game looks like a bit of a gift. It's a bit of an Alex special uh, in the sense that it's a small indie game which relies on things like narrative and storytelling and atmosphere and art style. And that's why I like it, because it's my kind of game. I like these little small games that you can just sort of digest in a small amount of time that look beautiful and just tell an interesting and independent story. You know, again, it's not Doom Eternal. But I like the look of it, and I've just realized I haven't explained anything about the game. Basically, you wake up as the main protagonist, and you're stuck on a sinking ship, and you've got to escape, essentially. Um, but it's uh, all very narrative-driven. Um, there's platforming, and everything changes and switches around because, oh no, you know, the ship's filling with water and, you know, going all over the place. But I like the look of it, and maybe you will too. So l check it out. Then on the 9th of May, we have Donkey's Little Baby. Yes, it's Animal Well by Big Mode. I just wanted to say that in a video. I haven't actually looked into any details for this game because I want it to be as much of a surprise for me as possible. Obviously, I've picked up little bits and bobs here and there, so I can at least tell you about those. The game's all about exploration and survival rather than direct conflict, and it is, yes, it's a Metroidvania, it's my kind of thing. And whilst it isn't really combat focused, I I'm not entirely sure if the main character can even deal damage. You're just gonna have to like use your environment to try and maybe disable them, maybe kill them, I don't know. Again, I've only looked at very small details because I think this looks utterly charming. Obviously, the art is delicious, and I just want to be as surprised as I possibly can when I dive into it. And maybe you should too. Also on the 9th of May, we have Little Kitty Big City, which is where you play as a little kitty in an urban environment. <laughs> Yes, you're playing as a cat in the big city and you're having a snooze and then, oh no, you fall out of, well, not fall out of a window, you're already outside the window. Um, really not the ideal place for a cat, just putting it out there. And you've got to explore the city and you can do it in any which way you like. You can bother people, you can wear hats. I've actually played a demo for this on my Steam Deck and it was really good fun. It's very straightforward in some ways and also complex in others. It really requires you to use your head a bit. I did find some of the platforming 
becoming a little bit, like, infuriating at times, but a lot of it was also really satisfying. And the animations, oh, oh, the animations are superb. If you've ever owned cats, you'll know how well they did here. Admittedly, a lot of it's kind of cartoony, but it's the little details. The little details, they got right big stretch. Also, also on the 9th of May, we have Corpo Nation, the sorting process. Now this again, I mean, this is another bit of an Alex special. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's basically very dystopian. You work for a company. It seems to be all powerful and you've got to like, just go about your day and presumably work out some secrets. And it's the secrets that are really intriguing me because I find this kind of setting uh, very intriguing. It's very Black Mirror-esque, you know, sort of control and people and corporations taking over. I'm getting vibes of, like, Papers, Please as well with some of the uh, busy work that you do. Yeah, it just seems like my kind of game, which, um, again, probably isn't for everyone, but hey, I'm making the list. Shut up. Again, the art is lovely. I, I understand that some people find that the pixel art style to be a little overplayed, and whilst that may be the case, I, I don't know, I, I still like it, and it can be done in so many different ways. I mean, in many ways, it's basically just a lower resolution so it, it's not a style in its sense is this a hill i'm gonna die on maybe then on the 14th of may arguably a little bit overdue we have braid anniversary edition I do want to clarify when I say that this is overdue. It's not because the game's been delayed massively. I think it was delayed briefly. Um, more that, why is it taking them this long to do a remake of Braid? I remember playing the original back in the space year of whenever it came out, or possibly one of the years later. On my Xbox 360, it was one of the first experiences I had with uh, Xbox Live Arcade and digital games as a whole, and it's a great game. I imagine that the impact would probably have waned by now a little, bit. It's not as unique as it was when it was first released, but even so, it, it's a bit of gaming history, at least for me it is. It plays around with time in really interesting ways that other games have since been inspired by. I don't want to just say copied, but alright, it's been copied. But that should just exaggerate how impactful this game was. You know, sometimes the time will only move when you move, and when you move forward, time's move, time moves forward, and when you move backwards, time moves backwards. You know, it, it's clever stuff, and you've got to try and work your way through. It's definitely puzzled as much it is platformer, but not in the typical puzzle platformer sense. Um, if you've played Braid, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't, keep an eye out for this game. It should be a good one. Also on the 14th of May, we have Biomutant. Now, this was released to mixed reviews back in the day, but I'm just kind of excited to see this running on Switch because this game was originally released in 2021, so it's a reasonably recent game. Um, I mean, it's not that recent, but, you know, time is an illusion. But obviously, it was originally released for Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and I'm always keen to see how these games make the transition. I just find it endlessly fascinating, and considering this game, I believe, had issues running on those systems, the fact that it's being condensed down onto Switch it, you know, sort of immediately piqued my interest. It may not be the best game ever released, but I'm still curious to try it out myself because I've never played it. And again, I'm always keen to see how they do these conversions. Then on the 16th of May, we have Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, which looks mental. <laughs> the game revolves around the idea of illusions, and obviously the artwork is drop-dead gorgeous, but the only other thing that I know about this game, and the only other thing that I care about, is that it was developed by, and I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of this, Simogo, um, which if you don't know, they're the people who produced Sayonara Wild Hearts, so... I'm, I'm already sold. Okay, truthfully, that's not the only thing I know about the game. It's a, it, it's a sort of exploration, not quite point and click puzzle game, but you know, with it a similar vein. Similar to something like the original Alone in the Dark. That's the kind of game that I remember hideously fondly when I was growing up and had an old PC back in the 90s and early 2000s. And I am gagging to relive that kind of experience, but with all the modern luxuries of, you know, working properly. These games do live or die on their puzzles, and if they're too obscure and too obtuse, then they're just frustrating, you end up having to look them up, uh, but if they're too obvious, then it's dissatisfying. It's really hard to get that balance right, but I have every faith in the developer. So fingers crossed, this turns out to be a nice time. And finally, we have Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which 
Do I even need to talk about this game? <laughs> I would, but to be brutally honest, Felix has already done a far better job of doing it than I ever could because he's played it. Yes, he's played the flipping game, and so you should go and check out the preview in the video description. It'll also be at the end of the video in those sort of like end card things, so you can click that. But don't go to, don't go yet. There's a little bit of waffling left. Suffice it to say, I'm excited for this game, and I think everybody else is, so... Um, yeah, uh, should we just move on? And there we have it. Those are, in our opinion, the most exciting games coming to the Switch in the month of May. But did we miss something? Is there a game out there that you are champing at the bit to get your hands on? Let us know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you, uh, ask that subscribe button something? It may respond. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Big mood. Big mood.